Echo One, Papa Yankee Echo. Nice signal there from up north, WA6DON. Go ahead. Hey, everybody. It's Tom, WA2IVD. Just listening to 17 meters here in the truck, it's been pretty good for most of the day. After I did the video about using the SD card to help you log your contacts when you're running HF Mobile, I got a number of questions about the setup that I'm using in my truck here for HF. So I thought I'd give you a little tour of how I've got things set up, how I've got the radio mounted, and what I'm doing for HF Mobile. It's really nothing very fancy, and it's probably not the best setup in the world, but it works for me. Before we take a look at my setup, I do want to make a comment about the 7100. Several of you have commented or sent me questions about the 7100 and output power and asked me if I'm familiar with or if I've done any of the modifications that are out there across the internet to up the power on the 7100. I've done a little bit of research and I know that there's a number of people that claim the radio doesn't put out full power unless you do these modifications. I have not done any mods to my 7100. It's stock the way it came from ICOM and I really haven't had any problem and as you'll hear when we do some of these contacts you'll see that I've received pretty good signal reports from people. So I have not specifically experienced that problem. Maybe there are some radios that do have power problems compared to others, I don't know. I will say one of the things about the 7100 is it does need 13.8 or pretty close to 13.8 volts coming into it. So if you're using it mobile and you're using it with your vehicle turned off and without the alternator charging the battery where they're getting down to you know 12, 12 and a half volts and you've also got some voltage drop going through your cabling you may have problems. I have had mine flake out on me when I'm running full power and I don't have the engine running and I get full power peaks or if I'm running on FM even full power up on VHF and UHF I have had the radio flake out on me and I have to start the engine to get it to behave properly. One of my future modifications to my setup here is I want to get one of the 12 volt to 13.8 volt DC to DC converters. There's several brands out there and I'm going to put one of those in here so that when I am running on just battery power I'm actually getting 13.8 volts to the radio. I also plan on installing that right where the radio is mounted so I don't have to worry about cable drop. Anyway, that's just my comment and how things are working for me. Your mileage may vary, but let's take a look at what the rest of my setup is and we'll listen to a couple of contacts. Yeah, Whiskey America 2, India, Victor Delta, Mobile, just north of Huntsville, Alabama. QSL, this is November 1, Kilo Sierra Charlie. You are coming through probably at 5-9 in Cape Canaveral, Lighthouse, US 0-0-9-er-9-er. -er. Thanks for the call. Whiskey America 2, India, Victor Delta, Mobile. Okay, WA2 India Victoria Delta Mobile, right? QSL, QSL. Okay, well, you got a great signal here. You're 5 and 9 in Arizona. The name is Mickey as in Mickey Mouse, over. Hey, Mickey, thanks for doing this. And the name here is Tom Tango Oscar Mike. He definitely was a great guy and helped a lot with the hobby. Oh, he certainly did. Incidentally, you have a great signal for a mobile. What are you running? Uh, just running 100 watts, an ICOM 7100, and I'm using a Wolf River coil with a, about a 5-foot stainless steel whip on top of it. Well, I'm not familiar with Wolf River, but it's doing a great job for you. Thanks for the, thanks for the call. All right. Thank you, Mickey, and thanks for running this. We'll let you get to everybody else. WA2, India, Victor, Delta, Mobile, clear on your final. Okay. This is K7, UGA, clear and QRZ. India, Victor, Delta, Mobile. Well, the mobile station, we always start with that. India, Victor, Delta, Mobile. Go ahead, over. Yeah, good afternoon. Just uh, listening in, and uh, you got a booming signal here into Kansas. This is Whiskey Alpha 2, India, Victor, Delta. Name is Tom. 
Well, Tom, you, it sounds like you're next door. My goodness, from a mobile station, you're booming in here. Whiskey. WA2, India Victor Delta Mobile will be clear on your final. Kilowatt Charlie 2 Echo Echo Sierra. All right, very very good. Thank you so much for reaching up. What a you you've got the best mobile station signal I've ever heard. <laughs> Especially given you're I don't know uh, 1,500 miles away. So we've got great propagation. Enjoy the weekend. Uh, Whiskey Alpha 2 India Victor Delta. This is Kilo Charlie 2 Echo Echo Sierra. 73. Okay, first we're going to take a look at how I've mounted the head, and I've been doing this this way for a number of years on different vehicles and different radios, and I am just using, I use the RAM mounting kits, and or the mounting pieces, I should say. So we've got a small um, double female that takes the one inch ball, I've got just the one inch ball that screws into a quarter 20 threaded hole. So that's what's on the bottom of the radio. And then the piece that I have here, this is just one of the one inch ball mounts, but you notice the holes, if you can see those on the camera, I'll see if I can get you a better shot of that, but these are just filled in and what I've done is I've literally just taken black RTV silicone rubber. I put it on the bottom of this ball, spread it around on the bottom of the ball, made sure that this top surface on the truck was very clean. I cleaned it off with alcohol. And then I just mounted this on and, and held it down with some masking tape to hold it in place until the RTV set and I filled in the holes as smoothly as I could. It's not the best job in the world, but it looks fairly factory. And then you just literally use the, the RAM mounts. And I have found that the RTV holds pretty well. Now I did, I actually did have this mount did come off on me once, but uh, that was when I was doing some driving in very rough terrain with the uh, with the truck and it got uh, it kind of got jarred loose with all of the bouncing normal driving on the road um, I haven't had any problem and you notice you've got a lot of flexibility you can mount this up high this way I can pull it out like this let me see if I can get you a better angle on that I don't have the best job in the world yet on the cabling here. The cabling is just running down the side here. And I did actually have a couple of little dabs of RTV that were kind of holding it in so that it was in this little crease. And that hasn't really stayed very well, so I really do need to do something different about that. But that's really all there is to the to the mount up front. and. In this shot, you can't really see it very well. Let me get you a better angle on that. I can angle this, and actually let me turn this on, so I'm not sure how well you'll see the display lit up from that angle. The display is facing directly at my eyes with it here. And with this not flat like this, but actually angled down, the display is directly at me, and then I can actually see the buttons because they're angled at me. I was a little concerned about the angle on this when I first got this, but actually for mobile, as long as you have a mount that allows you to adjust the angle that this is at, this actually works out really well with the buttons angled down, the knobs are right where I can easily reach them while I'm driving. And then I have the microphone here, and I think you can see this. I just have, uh, this is just a little stick-on microphone clip. I did have to bend over the ends on both the left and right side because I have it on just this narrow surface here. And I did end up putting two little stick-on rubber bumpers down here 
and that's because the microphone was kind of scraping against this surface and marring it up a little bit so i put a couple of little rubber stick-on bumpers there and then that keeps the microphone from marring but it's pretty easy to get to it's out of the way when i'm driving and uh, that's the way the front's mounted so this is the wolf river coil i've got about a five foot stainless steel whip that is connected to the top that's just a 102 inch cb whip uh, was actually a purchase from Radio Shack before they went out of business. They had a couple of them at one of the Radio Shacks that was near me when they were doing all the going out of business sales and I picked up a few and this one's just one of them that's been cut down. Now the five foot is probably a little bit too long for this coil. I'll have a link to this coil in the description if you're interested but this is the this is a Wolf River coil and this is probably a little bit too long because if you notice this is the tuning element for it so this just literally slides up and down and the wire is connected at the bottom of the coil here so you're just shorting out whatever part of the coil you're not using and where this was when i first started here this is um i just was we're making a contact on 17 meters. So this is tuned for 17 meters. So with this whip, with this whip I'm pretty sure I'm probably not going to be able to tune this for 12 or 10 meters. I haven't tried that actually. I've been mostly working 40 and 20 meters with it and it's great for that. But I'll probably have to put a little bit shorter whip on if I'm going to use this for 12 meters or 10 meters. So for mounting and grounding I have a braid that you can see here. This goes up to the bottom of the 3 8 24 mount. It's just in one of the stake pockets on the truck. And then I have that bolted to the truck here. I had uh, sanded off the, the coating on the inside of the truck. So this was down to bare metal. And then I just painted over it after I put the braid on. So that's my ground for the antenna. I do also have a couple of wires connecting the box of the truck to the front of the truck and to the frame underneath, but they're not braid or copper straps, they're just like 12 gauge wire. I kept them as short as possible, but I think one of the grounding upgrades I need to do is I'm going to change those to copper strap and do a little bit better bonding from the box of the truck to the frame and the front of the truck. Here's the VHF UHF antenna mounted on the front of the truck. Might be a little hard to see in this lighting that I've got here right now, but that seems to work pretty well. And this provides me with a pretty good SWR pretty much across the entire band, two meters and 440. Now I know a lot of the modern vehicles, it's getting harder and harder to find places to put a radio these days especially with sedans or you know any kind of smaller car fortunately with a pickup truck you've got a few more options so this is the back seat of the pickup truck and i happen to have a really nice place where the radio will go and that's right here underneath so let's take a little bit closer look at that so i just have the radio and my MFJ tuner sitting on this shelf in the back that's just a little storage area. I do not have a mounting bracket for either of these, but I'm not really too concerned about that because when this seat is down, there isn't really any place they're gonna go. So this is only gonna slide forward. So I've got my VHF UHF antenna, which goes down and snakes underneath the carpeting and goes out through the firewall to the front of the truck where I've got that mounted. And then this is for the HF antenna and this goes over here to the tuner. And then on the back of the tuner, I'm not gonna pull that out. I've got the cable for here and then the other cable goes down underneath and goes outside to where the 3H24 mount is. And this is the ground that I wanna replace. This is just a 
12 gauge wire here. I want to change that out for some strapping and try bonding everything a little bit better. Really haven't had much in the way of RFI problems, but on a couple of frequencies, I do get a little bit more noise from the truck, from the electronics and things in the truck, and I have had a couple of things go a little wacky on me on certain frequencies. So I want to try to bond everything better. And then actually something that I saw on Ham Radio Crash Course and uh, Josh uh, on, that, on his YouTube channel wasn't a mobile installation, but he did some wraps of the power cable to the radio to get rid of some interference that he was picking up on receive, and it made a big difference. So I'm going to try that on here. Now, I know some of you are going to give me a hard time about having a tuner connected when I've got a resonant antenna or a tuned antenna outside. So let me explain why I'm doing that. The Wolf River coil is really good and you can tune it to get pretty good SWR on any of the frequencies that I'm using, but it's pretty narrow. So when I'm driving, if I want to move around on 40 meters or 20 meters, I don't really want to necessarily stop if I'm on the highway to get out and retune the antenna every time I change frequency by more than, you know, 10 or 20 kilohertz. So I basically use the antenna tuner as, I'll call it a trim tuner, to kind of trim the antenna in the last little bit. There's not a lot of cable between here and the antenna, so I'm not really worried about losses. And it seems to work pretty well the way I've got it arranged. So basically what I do is if I'm changing bands, I will wait till I'm going to stop to do that if I'm on the road. And then I'll get out and I'll adjust the antenna for the particular band I want to be on, 20, 40, 17, whatever. And then I'll usually do that adjustment for somewhere around the middle of the band. And then when I'm driving, if I want to move up or move down the band, then I will just use the tuner to trim it in the rest of the way. Oh, and that's the other, the plug here is, this is obviously going to the MFJ, that's for the auto-tune, since the 7100 does support that directly. So that's it. That's not really too much to this installation. It's pretty straightforward, nothing to write home about. I don't have, you know, heavy-duty mounting brackets or anything. Um, I do have an external speaker cable plugged in here. You may or may not be able to see that. That goes up to a small external speaker that I've got up front, and it's just actually sitting in my center console. But that works a little bit better than the speaker that's on the uh, control head. There is a speaker in the control head, but when you've got it mounted, it's facing away from you, so it's not that great in a car. The one other thing that is a little inconvenient with this, the SD card slot on this is way up here in the front of the radio, so I have to kind of scoot this back and reach up and just change the SD card out by feel if I'm taking the SD card out or putting one in. But that's not really too bad because there's really nothing else on the radio up on the front side that I need to worry about. Oh, and of course, you, there's also the, obviously the control head cable. I didn't mention that, and you can see that here. And that's just, again, snaking through the carpeting up to the front where the control head is. So that's pretty much it for the installation. Like I said, nothing too fancy, but it seems to work pretty well for me. Well, that's it for this time. Since you stuck around for this long, if you like this video or found it useful, I'd appreciate a click on the like button. If you like the channel or find it useful, please consider subscribing. You can also click on the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. Please be sure to check out the description for links to items mentioned in the video and to the companion website for this channel. YouTube recently added improved support for chapter marks to take you directly to specific sections of a video. I've included chapters in the description for this video, and I'll include them in future videos whenever it makes sense. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.